well. That's the fence. That's the fence. Yeah, please. Excuse me, um, I, I called in that time. I have two questions I'd like to ask. Yeah, go ahead, sure. Thank you. Um, first, you mentioned in a, in a conversation with, with a, several Tea Party leaders at a Tea Party meeting that you wanted, that you wanted a, a law passed that would, be, that would stop out-of-state students from voting in New Hampshire because, quote, students, when they're in college, I'm paraphrasing here, students, when they're in college, they're sitting around, they're voting their feelings, they're being foolish, they're voting liberal. What is the threshold for when someone can exercise their constitutional right to vote? Is someone's ideology spo supposed to be a witness test on, or age when it's constitutionally allowed? And intended upon being a witness test on who can vote? Okay. I mean, by no, that, no, no, I say, what's your second question? There's a series of questions, what's your second question? Okay, the second question is kind of unrelated. Well, why don't I ask the first question first? Yeah, question. thank you. Jennifer wasn't clapping my Just so you know, it wasn't Jennifer. You know, there's, there's a spell that some of you might have read about him. His name is Saul Linsky. And Saul Linsky realized that something, you know, he was, he was a Marxist back in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. And he realized something. He realized that the United States would never, never turn to socialism. Um, and so he thought to himself, how do I get socialism? Um, how do I get socialism? And so he wrote this book that's available for all of us. He operated out of Chicago. He wrote, wrote this book. It's called Rules for Radicals. And, and um, the Rules for Radical were never talk these substantive issues with conservative politicians. Try to demonize them. Try to marginalize them. Try to radicalize them. Make, make them something strange and different and exotic. And, and so we see among conservative Republican leaders in this country a constant effort to marginalize them. You know, uh, Sarah Palin's like slightly sloppy and kind of weird and not educated well. And, and you know, Newt Gingrich is kind of a bad guy. And, and you know, Herman Cain is so, you know, we, what we find is that people want to talk about issues like that rather than the issues that are important to our state. The fact that I was joking around, the fact that I was joking around with some people, talking about you know uh, voter ID, and voter laws, and having having a joke with people. That's all they want to talk about. Marginalize this guy. Make sure that his conservative agenda isn't being talked about. Let's not talk about the substantive issues of overtaxing. Let's not talk about issues of, of bringing jobs and affordable government back to this country. Let's see if we can just marginalize, and that's what you're doing. Excuse, excuse me. May I ask one? So, sure. so what you're saying is that it's not a substantive issue when the law was put in, when the law was put into the House of Representatives to mar to marginalize the voting block that I will be joining within three years. What law was that? What I I what law was that? HB one seventy six. Thank you. One one it, HB 176 is a voter ID law that just says. Show who you are. And come and in. As you, 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 don't don't interrupt me. Right. Answer, don't, please don't interrupt me. House Bill 176 says, in essence, you have to, in order to get on a plane, to go in a federal building, to get on a train, to come into, uh, uh, to cash a check and come with a farm, you have to show who you are. All, all House Bill 176 says is prove who you are when you want to vote. There was a commission about 10 years ago, a little less than 10 years ago, that Howard uh, uh, Baker and Jimmy Carter um, had it. Jimmy Carter said that this country needs voter ID, that there should be picture ID. It's not intended to marginalize anyone. Young man, uh, if you can just show who you are, vote, oh, please do. Okay, then how about, uh, how about the student ID I'll have when I'm in college? When will, why will that not be accepted? You're going into particulars of it. Oh, come on in. Oh, oh, no, I no, 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 the bill is still in front of it. It's, it's whether or not there's sufficient verification by the issue and authority. We have, I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh. I'd, just like to, I'd, like, I'd like to clarify. Yeah. Okay. Could I just, I want to ask one no, quick one. No, no, uh, no. No, it's, I just no you're you not directing this meeting. Well, I, I recognize <laughs> no, you're bully in the no, house, no, 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 no,
waiting there. If you want to go, or you can go and take it outside. If you want to interrupt you. So there's, there is a voter ID bill, and I was the co sponsor on that bill, and it is still stuck in, in the routine because it felt it wasn't ready for prime time. There was a lot of issues of what we what is considered an ID, what isn't considered an ID. And right now there's another amendment coming forth. It's some type of government issued ID. It's like as Speaker O'Brien said, you have to have some type of government issued ID. We haven't figured out exactly Why? what that is yet. Why do we have to, to have a government? To prove who we are. Constitution says He's nothing about to proving who we are. are. Right. Would you want trust. someone to I ask you a question? Do you want someone to walk in and say they're you and vote for you? Then you come in and walk and vote to and walk Who's in. Who's coming in saying they're me? That's 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 not a problem having an argument here. We're having a civilized discussion. That's why you need some ID. We're not saying you can't. We're not going on a plane where there's safety involved. We're going to do our constitutional right to vote. And no one is going to Yes, you are. You're saying that. Please be quiet. You're recognized as First of all, Mr. Bryan, thank you for being Thank you for coming today. Really appreciate it. I'm in, I'm one of the minority in the in the room here. I think I'm from Lineville. And, uh, and uh, first of all, uh, I think that the, the actions that you're taking. I mean, you have a you have a very formidable job to do here because of the what has happened in the previous uh, administrations in in, in Concord. And I think uh, that what I heard from you today is a, a, a step definitely in the right direction in the state. I was born and raised in Lundgaro, as was my mother, as was all of my ancestors go back to the original settling families of this town. And all of them were raised on the principle of living within your means, and if you don't have the money, you don't spend it. And I think that's the big problem that we have. We have a lot of people that have moved into this state that think that they can just legislate and the money will come. Well, it doesn't come. It comes from developing uh, business, as you had said, uh, and, and revenues in that regard. We are not going to develop revenues by spending more money. We have to stop spending when we don't have to. And I think it's important that we support the, all of the programs that are necessary in, in the running of the state, including uh, the social programs which folks have mentioned, and also including uh, supporting the, the rights of, the, uh, of the, uh, the residents of this state. However, I think that it's time, we're in a time of economic downturn, we have to, we have to control our spending, and again, I applaud you for the, the efforts that you are taking to, to, to get things under control in Concord because they were way out of control before. I'd just like to go back to what Michael was asking about the 18-year-old students from out of state. Do you have a point where, first of all, was it a joke when you said that they, they're liberal, young, they need there's to a, there's a, yeah, Let me answer the question. Yes, there's a track where I was finishing up a discussion on door by me and started joking around with some of the folks. Okay, so you don't believe that. Do I do, do I believe what do, do I job? believe what church do I believe what church and what from themselves saying about young people? Yeah, sure. I think young, young people tend to vote. Um, so we should what about the young people? Young people tend to vote more liberally. So the 18 As you have life experience, we let me answer a question sure. before you cheer on your own questions. Sure. Um, I, I certainly believe what Churchill said and Clemens also said and a number of folks have observed over the years that um, younger people tend to vote more liberal, and as you get the life experience, you tend to be more conservative. So is the intention of... The intention is to do nothing. The intention well, is to make sure... Well, you that time. Oh. So is the intention of having out-of-state students not be able to vote to get rid of those less conservative votes? So no, no the, the the intention, no, the intention is you to make sure... Again, no, okay, you yeah, out. Yeah, the question. <laughs> <laughs> The intention is to make sure New Hampshire residents vote in New Hampshire um, elections. And your son? You know, this is the demonization I'm, I'm talking about. No, this is the demonization that I'm talking about. You know, this is it's exactly a the, it's it's a question. because of the rhetoric because of the rhetoric that you and your spring have had to have police cars outside my house. Why don't you answer the question? Do we, do we have any questions from anybody from the town of Lineborough?